Church, uh, as I continue with our messages that I've been hearing about sonship and uh, being sons of God, I trust that you really have that revelation. Amen? You don't? You do? Okay. Trust that you have the revelation of uh, being a son and coming into sonship. And last week, uh, we spoke about uh, our Bible reading. You all uh, read Genesis, the first five chapters. Hello? Did you? Anybody wants to share what touched you in the first five? Anyone? You never read it. <laughs> Did you read it? All right. But it's good. You know, if you, if you read, read the word, come and uh, share with us, you know, what, what really touched you. Out of, the, out of the five chapters, it must be something that has really touched your heart or really, wow, that was a revelation. Amen? So anyone knows how, how many years that Adam was on the earth? Hello? You don't know. So you all, I'm as Christian whether you read the Bible or not. 930 years. Amen? Am I right? Am I right? You're oh, bad Bible students, really. What was Noah's age when he had uh, the three sons? Sham, Em, and Japheth. What was his age? 500. Oh! Hello. I don't know. I give up, Lord. <clears throat> Let me continue. <laughs> okay. Church, one of the things that I want to really, really see is that Book of Acts, we are going back to the early church, you know, when the church was birthed, was birthed in power, amen? Was birthed in power when the day of Pentecost and when the 120 that was full with the power of the Holy Spirit and God has really touched them, filled them up, amen? And in the Bible, I just want to share the scripture with you as I continue in Acts chapter 4, in verse 33. If you're there, if you can... Uh, Turn to that Bible, turn to that scripture, in Acts chapter 4 and in verse 33. And he says, and with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And these were the apostles that has witnessed Jesus being raised from the dead. Am I right? And coming back to them and spending the time with them. So they had first hand information of Jesus' resurrection. Am I right? And he was sharing that with them. And he said, you know, and with great power, the apostles were giving testimony for the resurrection, to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And here's the scripture, it says, and abundant grace was upon who? Are you reading with me? Them all. Remember I shared last week that grace is what? Available for every single one. Not, a, not a just a group of people, but not only the leaders, not only us, but the grace is what? Poured out upon all of us. And there it says here, an abundant grace. In some version it says, great grace. And great grace was upon them all. Amen? Are you seeing that church? God has poured out grace upon you so that we'll be able to do the things that God instructed us. Remember I said to you last week that we can never do things unless we are doing it through Him. Amen? We are living through Him. Our God and our Jesus has done it. We are living through him and doing exactly as he did. You're never ever going to fulfill the word of God and what God has instructed us to do in the Bible if we cannot do it through Christ. Amen. And look at it. He says, an abundant grace, great grace was upon them all. Every one of them. The grace of God. Abundant grace was just being released upon them. Amen. And look at what happened in verse 34. For there was not a needy person among them. For all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and they lay them at the apostles' feet and they would be distributed to each as any ad need. I mean, because of them being fooled, because of them being touched, because of that grace that has come upon them. Are you catching a church? And that grace that was released upon them, the grace, that great grace that came upon them, they realized that what they have was not their own. Are you seeing that church? God has to give you grace for you to come to that understanding. And I pray that it's coming to you. 
that you understand that everything that you have that everything that you are enjoying in life is not your own because when you leave the earth do you take any of them with you hello have you ever seen a trailer connected or hooked up with a earth nothing is just the coffin am i right and, and god is saying when that grace comes upon you you are able to understand that everything that you have is not your own and that's why when they came to that understanding that is not our own they were able to what sell off and i'm not asking you to go and sell your houses please don't ever say oh pastor you want me to sell my house now no i'm not saying that so what these boys did what they did in the days that you know because of of the grace that was upon them and all that great grace that came upon them they realized that this does not belong to me and that's why they freely went and did that god is saying when that grace comes upon you you freely able to give and everyone in that place that's why he said there was not one of them that had lack i pray that pffc we come to that place and that's why as sons of god when you become a son of god this will become a reality that the one that's sitting next to you that as a need you'll be there say no i cannot see my brother i cannot see the one sitting next to me go without i'm willing to sell whatever i can to what to bring that need and to bring bring you know so they don't have that need they don't lack anything and this is what the early church has done when jesus and when that power of god came upon them and when the apostles stood and spoke about the resurrection of jesus man that grace just hit them and they were able to do what they did and as my heart church that will be a church that not one in this house will lack anything and no one said amen <laughs> come on not one in the house or in pffc not one will lack anything amen not one of us will lack anything that every one of will have an abundant supply god because god says great grace is upon us all great grace is upon us all church i hope as i share the word this morning that you're going to see how important you and i are on the on or that's that's placed on the earth at this time at this hour how important you and i are i pray that you walk into walk out this morning realizing that amen because i want to share with you this morning as we have come to the understanding that we are we are made sons of god as we are and i said this and let me let me repeat this again to you the son of god became what the son of man so that the sons of man can become the sons of god you still remember that okay so i believe that that as you came to that understanding of sonship and how you rise as a son now i want to share with you as the bible teaches us and this is where we are lacking in our nation we are lacking on the earth is the manifestation of those sons so that's what i want to share with you this morning the manifestation of the true sons of god amen the manifestation of the true sons of god church because as a son of god you have the power to pull down heaven onto the earth you have the power to pull down everything that you need because god says let it be on earth as it is in heaven so whatever heaven has earth has got to operate in the same dimension and god is saying as a son you have the power i've given you the grace i've given you the power to pull down everything from heaven amen that you can live this life on the earth amen that's why jesus came as a pattern son am i right He is the firstborn son. He came as a pattern son to show us how to do it. Because when he was on the earth, he was the one that never lacked anything. And he pulled down everything from heaven. He pulled it down on the earth, and in everything that he needed for the journey was what provided for him. That's why he was the pattern son and I'm saying to you, we have got to live like Jesus. Amen. We got to live like him. We got to live like him and know that what he's shown us on the earth, we can operate in the same dimension. That's why is it for them that believe I have given them the power
power to become like me. I'm going to drum that scripture. John chapter 1 verse 12. I'm going to drum it in you. That through them that believe. He says I have given them the power to become like me. To become a child. To become a son. The son of God. Are you seeing that church? Amen? Are you catching that? So why must they be true sons manifesting on the earth? Because we have a true God. Hello? Because we have a true God. And that's why if you have a true God, the true sons of God has to manifest on the earth. Let me show you in uh, Romans chapter 8. And this is where the problem is of mankind. This is a problem on the earth. Romans chapter 8. You all know that scripture? Romans chapter 8. I think Romans chapter 8 is one of the best chapters in the entire Bible. For me. Romans chapter 8 is an amazing, amazing chapter. If you can read and study that. That will change your whole life. Amen? Okay, Romans chapter 8. Let's read from verse 18. It says, For I consider that the sufferings of the present time, it's on the, on the screen, okay? For I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Next verse, 19. For the earnest expectation I hear this out. For the earnest expectation of what? The creation eagerly waits for who? The revealing of the sons of God. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing, the manifestation of the sons of God. Go to the next verse. For the creation was what? Subjected, this, the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Go to the next verse. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from what? From the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the Children of God. Let me read that again. Because the creation itself also will be de delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Whose responsibility is to deliver the earth from bondage? The sons of God. Let me just read this from my version, okay? In verse, in verse 19, for the, for, the earn, for the anxious longing of the creation awaits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. Why? So that the earth can be taken away from bondage and corruption. Are you seeing that, church? Who are the true sons of God? Verse 14. For all who are what? Being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. I see that church. These that are led by the Spirit of God are what? Sons of God. A church. This is why God has brought us a message into, about sonship and how we can be led by the Spirit. How we can give our lives. We can follow Christ. Amen. We can be what? Reliant on Him. Dependent on Him. And also what? Live through Him and in Him. Amen. And when we do that, what are we doing? We are being led by the Spirit of God. Are you seeing that? We are led by the Spirit of God. In the beginning, right in the book of Genesis, and I'll show you scriptures. It was man that brought the earth into corruption. Alright, let's explore very quickly. 
In Genesis chapter 1, we'll just stay in Genesis for a few minutes. Genesis chapter 1. And in verse 26. So God made the beast of the earth after, the, after their kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creeps on the ground after its kind and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish. So everything that God created in verse 25, God had given man what? Rulership, dominion, to take, to take control. It says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Have you seen that? So God gave man dominion. He says, everything that I created, everything on the earth, I'm giving you dominion. I'm giving you to rule over the earth. All right, let's see now in verse Genesis chapter 2. So in Genesis chapter 1, God spoke it in the spirit. Am I right? Bible students, in Genesis chapter 1, God spoke it in the spirit. He said, let us make man. Let us do everything. The first day, the second day, everything. Okay. Now in chapter 2, what he spoke in chapter 1 became a reality. All right. So let's read from verse 1. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were completed and all the host. By the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in all... in, in because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heaven. Now, no shrubs of the field was yet in the earth. Okay, you can read all that. How God placed man to cultivate the ground. But a must used to rise from the earth and water the whole surface because at that time, there was no rain. Okay, God kept man to what? Take care of everything that he's created. And he brought mist out of the ground to water that. In verse 6, but a mist used to rise from the earth and water the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden towards the east in Eden. And there he placed the man whom he had formed out of the ground the Lord God caused to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food and tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden and from there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is whatever you can read all that okay all right. So read the whole entire thing of everything that God had created. What he spoke in verse 1, in chapter 1, became a reality in chapter 2. Okay, now I want you to, to go to chapter 3. Chapter 3. And let's read from verse 17. In chapter 3, after man fell. So everything that God created was good. Everything God created at that time was really good. And God said everything that he did. Now look after the fall of man. After Adam and Eve fell. Now look in verse 17. Then to Adam, he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from it. You read the next one. Cursed is a ground because of who? For your sake. See, as long as Adam, I mean, as long as Eve ate of the tree, it was fine. But the moment she gave to Adam to eat, God said, because of that, because Adam, 
You didn't take the responsibility you knew that what I told you, do not eat of the tree, but you still took it because your wife told you. And he says, based on that, because of what you have done, the ground is cursed because of you. It says, cursed is the ground for your sake. So church, are you seeing? Who brought corruption into the earth? Who brought the curse onto the earth? It was not God. It was man. Now you understand, because of the curse that was brought onto the ground, that in the book of Romans chapter 18, I'm sorry, chapter 8, verse 18, it says what? The earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Why? To destroy bondage and to destroy the corruption that is on the earth. Are you seeing that church? Are you seeing that? And let's read on. It says, Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. That was not God's intention. But because of the curse, God says, Adam, you're going to eat. Let's read it again. It says there. It says, Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. In some version it says, you will work by the sweat of your brow. Amen? That was not God's intention. But because man brought the curse upon the land, that's what they had to pay the price for. Verse 19, it says, in verse 18, both thorns and thistles, it shall grow for you. Was there thorns and thistles before the fall? There was none, am I right? No thorns, no thistles. It says, thorns and thistles, it shall grow for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face, you will eat bread, till you return to the ground, because from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. You know that when you go to funerals, we do the, the committal, from dust you were born, to dust you shall return. Does it? And it says, because of your curse, you will produce thorns and thistles. Now, church, catch this. Yeah, I, I love the word of God and I love everything that God had put. There's nothing there by accident. Why do you think Jesus had to wear a crown of thorns? It's to reverse that. It says, because the ground is cursed, and now I produce. Didn't God say everything that He produced was good? Did ever God says, ah, oh, this is not good? Everything that God prepared and everything that God had made, He said it was good. Even when He when He made man as well, He said it is good. But because of the curse, thorns and thistles, and when Jesus went to the cross. And those thorns were put on his, on his head. And blood was oozing out. It was to what? Destroy this. That you will not ever, the ground will not ever produce thorns and thistles. Oh. Are you catching it, church? Amen? That's why when Cain killed his brother Abel, what does the Bible say? What did God say to Cain? Cain. When he asked, where is your brother? And he says, I am my brother's keeper. Am I my brother's keeper? He says, the, your, brother, your brother's blood cries out from the ground. Hello? It cries out from the ground. It was man that brought the earth into corruption. It was man that brought the curse onto the earth. Are you seeing that church? That's why when true sons arise, you can live in a corrupted society. You can live in a corrupted world and still be protected. You can still prevail. Why? Because you are the sons that the earth is waiting for. It says the earth is groaning for the manifestation 
of the sons of God. Why? Because we are the ones that can remove the bondage, that we can remove the corruption on the earth. The reason why it's not done is because the church has become corrupted like the world. And God is saying, I'm looking for true sons that will rise. True sons that could take the mantle. True sons that we can stand together and we say, can say God, let us be the ones to, cur to break every curse, to remove every bondage of the earth. That's why governments don't have the answers, church. They don't. Only the sons of God. Only the sons of God. And God, in those last days, is raising up his sons. And I said to you last week, God is raising us the apostles of the time. He's raising up sons and the sons that are not, not the ones that's got a high education. He's raising up true sons that were able to stand and say, we will be the ones to destroy every corruption, to break every bondage that's on the earth. Why? Because it was man that made the earth corrupt. Have you seen that church? It was man that made the earth corrupt corrupt that's why in the midst of all the plagues and everything that was happening you remember the time of the plagues and right in the land of Goshen who was there the children of God while everything was being destroyed all around them they were in the land of Goshen there was total complete darkness all around but in the land of Goshen there was light are you seeing that church? Remember I said to you, you as a son, you never look at what the surrounding is. You look far beyond that. You look beyond the sun. You look beyond of what you're seeing all around you. All the corruption, everything that is taking place. We don't succumb to it. We don't be the ones to follow it. We don't be, be the ones to, to do the same things. But we've got to see beyond that. And God is saying, that the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the true sons that can see beyond what we are seeing today. Are you seeing that church? How do we get this nation right? This is a way. We got to look beyond what we see and say, God, if you are, if you are, if the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons, I want to be that one son that will stand in the gap. Are you seeing that church? Are you catching that? That's why when Cain killed, I mean the first murder, first murder, I want you to always look at what God, when he created, everything he created was good. The first murder in the Bible was this Cain that killed his brother Abel. And what did God have to do? Bring forth Seth. That will follow. Am I right? The lineage that will come. God, just hope you can catch this. The fact is that God says that the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. You are important in the eyes of God. Amen? We are important in the eyes of God. So I, there came a time, you can go read this in the book of Genesis. Let's go there. We are in Genesis. Let's go to 6. Let me show you this quickly. <clears throat> Verse 1. Now it came about when men began to multiply on the face of the, uh, of the land and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they took wives for themselves whomever they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also, because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be 120 years. Okay? 120 years is a maximum lifespan for men on the earth. And then in verse 4, it says, The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they brought children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every, that, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 
And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. That grieved God, church. Amen? Because of the wickedness. And then in verse 7. Okay, so the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping, every creeping thing and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them. Prior to the fall, even the beasts were made, they were at peace with each other. All the animals, everyone. But the moment the fall came, even the animals attacked each other. Adam named all the animals. He was playing with the lions. Come on. When you see a lion today, did you run? You don't go near a lion, am I right? In the days of Adam, before the fall, he was playing with them. And he, he was the one that named each and every one of them. Am I right? He was playing with them, he was there. And that's why God had to bring Eve because there was no companion that was suitable for him. But he was playing. I mean, think of it. All the animals and every, every, all the animals that you run away from. Adam was playing with them. So let's read on. And the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals to creeping things and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. You see that? Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the records of Noah's generation. You can read that. And then in 10, Noah became the father of three sons, Shem, Em, and Japheth. Verse 11. Now the earth was what? Corrupt in the sight of God. And the earth was filled with violence. Do you see, church? Right from back of Genesis, in the beginning, what we're seeing today is not new. It's not new. God, right there, and man was the one that brought corruption onto the earth, that brought the curse back. If you go and read Noah, Noah did the same thing. Neighbors know that the whole entire, God wiped out the entire, all of them, all he saved was just Noah and his family. Noah and his three sons, his wife, and also the three daughter-in-laws. All right? You read the Bible. <laughs> okay? Are you seeing church? One righteous man, God, found, he found favor in Noah. And because of Noah, his family was saved. Men, the head of the home, you can lose your family because of you. And if you're the one that standing righteous and you're the one that's saying I will be the one that will be the true son of God your family will come into everything that God has prepared I mean even the, the three the boys three I don't know the daughter-in-laws that was there got saved because of Noah you see how one person can ruin his own family and yet with just one righteous man and with one man having favor upon his life, his whole family was saved. And if you read that, when Noah, you remember the time when the ark rested and when he came out and he, and he, and he built an altar and he did an offering and God smiled and he said, I will never again, what? Destroy mankind. But what Noah did, he brought the curse back. Am I right, church? He brought, the, he brought the curse back. I seen that? He brought the curse back. Church, because Adam rebelled against God, the earth rebelled 
against Adam. Why was that so? Because God, what? Put him to rule over the earth. Are you seeing that? When you rebel against God, what happens? The earth rebels against you. Are you catching the church? That's why God raised up just one man. And if you look at it in, in, verse, in chapter 9 and in verse 1, it says, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. One man. Out of one man. God said, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So out of Noah and his family came all the other generations, came Abraham, came everyone, and we are seated here today. So what am I saying this morning? God is saying, Until the rising of the true sons of God and the earth is seeing the corruption that we see on the earth, everything that is happening on the earth, God is saying, unless the true sons of God rise, the true sons of God are rising on the earth, the earth will continue groaning. Church, you are sons of God. You've come into sonship. Now let's be the sons that are manifested on the earth. Amen? That the earth will not groan any longer. Are you seeing that? That the earth will not groan any longer. Let me show you this in Isaiah chapter 9. And this will bring you, will bring you really, really good. Will bring you a peace. That you know that this is what we can experience. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. Can I read? <clears throat> Verse 1. It says, Then a shoot will spring forth from the stem of Jesse, and the branch from his roots will be a fruit. The Spirit of the Lord, uh, speaking about Jesus, okay? It says, yeah, Then a shoot will spring forth from the stem of Jesse. Who was Jesse? David's father, right? And Jesus came in the same lineage. Alright? It says, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and strength. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. And he will not judge by what his eyes see. Nor make a decision by what his ears hear. Speaking about the Lord. He will not, what? And he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make a decision by what his ears hear. How many times we do that? We judge by what we see. Am I right? Hello? You know the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Am I right? Okay? Let's continue. Verse 4. But with righteousness, he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth and the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. I know I'm giving you a lot of scripture, but you can go out uh, back home and read it over and again. Okay, I'm just going to shoot through it, all right? Also, righteousness will be the belt about his loins. And faithfulness, the belt about his waist. And now hear this out in verse 6. And the wolf will dwell with the lamb. <laughs> can that happen now? The moment the lamb sees a wolf, pew, it's gone. I'm right. But he says, the stem of Jesse, okay, Jesus Christ came and he said, this is what we will experience. And the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the young goat. Does that happen now? And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little boy will lead them. Remember I said to you in Adam's days, he was the one that played with them, that was there with them. 
And it says here, and a little boy will lead them. Also, the cow and the bear will grace. Right now, can the cow and the bear graze together? <laughs> They'll attack each other, am I right? But you see what God is saying, when the earth grows no longer, this is what we will experience. Are you waiting for the day that Jesus comes back? Oh, my God. Nobody. What is wrong with you this morning? Are you tired? Are you not waiting for, uh, for the Lord to come back? Yes, when Jesus comes back, when he's the one that comes and takes us, we will see these things happening. Amen? Are you catching that, church? And the cow and the bear will graze. The young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. <laughs> Does the lion eat straw right now? No. It says, but the lion will eat straw like the ox. The nursing child will play by the hole of the cobra. And the weaned child will put his hand in, on the viper's den. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Then in that day, the nations will resort to the root of Jesse. Who will stand as a signal for the peoples. And his resting place will be glorious, the restored remnant. Then it will happen on that day. That the Lord will again recover the second time with his hands the remnant of his people who will remain. Are you catching a church? These are the things that you're going to see signs before the Lord comes. Right? You're going to see that. That's why if you look at the time when Noah built the ark. When he built the ark and God is talking to me, he said two of each animal will, he will have to get two of each animal into the ark. Am I right? Can you imagine all these animals that came in to the ark and they had to live together for all these years until the ark settled and the water subsided. Are you seeing that church? We will experience that again. That's why God is all powerful. He's an almighty God. Noah did not go out looking for these animals, church. They came by themselves. Am I right? How many of you have seen uh, that movie? Noah's Ark. Or is it, was it a movie, Noah's? Where they saw all the animals just... Walking to the ark. Do you watch movies? Okay. <laughs> you watch that? That's what happened. No, I didn't go out and say, hey, kitty. Like, how you, you know how you call your cat? Where you go? Or your dog? Never did all that. He just stood at the ark. And all the animals came to the ark. He attracted everything that had to what? coming to the ark so that they'll be able to what? Continue with the journey of the human race being preserved and multiplying. And the animals multiplied. Amen? Are you catching it, church? That's why when you're a son of God, when you come into sonship and when you say, I am a son as a manifested son, Lord, that earth will not groan any longer. What happens, church? You will attract all this. That's why as God brought all these animals to the ark by himself. Church, listen to me. You got a business? God will bring contracts to you. He will bring customers to you. He knows how to bring customers into your shop. He knows how to bring people to you. Why? Because you stand as a son. A true son of God. See, as a true son of God, no one found favor in God's sight. Because he was a righteous man. He was blameless. Am I right, church? He was blameless. And oh God, everything that God instructed him to do, was everything was provided. Even up to the time of bringing the animals into the ark, all he stood there and the animals themselves came into the ark. 
That's why it's not difficult for God to fill this church. Every single seat in this church can be full in God's time. It was a time perfect, all set aside for Noah to stand there and the animals to come. Amen. Are you catching that church? How did you join this church? I didn't go out put any adverts. I didn't call you. You came. How? God directed you. Are you catching your church? If he did that with the animals, where he brought everyone into the ark, is it difficult for him to what? Direct a human being? I remember the, the time when we started the church and the testimonies that I heard of how people got there. I was like amazed, Lord. There was one lady that, that came out. She said she just came out of a complex. And she meant to turn left to go to, I don't know which church it was. And when she came out uh, to the left of her, she saw a couple of guys who were suspicious that were standing there. And she turned right and got to our church and never left. Are you catching a church? God is the one that when you stand as a true son of God, when you stand and you say, God, I want to be the one that the, the earth will not groan any longer because I want to manifest as a true son of God. You see how things be attracted to you. Everything will come. All I did, church, was just open PFFC in 2008. And 15 years later, this is what you see. All I did was just open the church. And all of you came. This building came. Everything came. Why? When you are a son of God and you say, Lord, that earth will not groan any longer. You see how things get attracted to you. There's things that other people will pray for you that you will think like, I never even prayed for this. How did I get this? I seen that church. I was in our pastor's meeting the other day and, and uh, one of the pastors came to me and said, you know, uh, so and so was, had you in your mind and they were praying for you. And I said, oh, thank you. Are you seeing a church? When you're the true son of God that manifests on the earth, things will be attracted to you. Noah never went around running around looking for wood and whatever to build the ark. Everything came to him. Everything. I see that church. Now you understand when the true sons of God manifest, everything gets aligned back to you. Why? Like in the days, like in, in Genesis chapter 1, 26, where God says, I will create man and I'll create the animals and, and man will rule and dominate over that. You will. Why? When true sons arise, they align back to Genesis 1.26. That we take rulership. That we take authority. That we have the power for things to be attracted to us. Why? Just so that we stand. Amen? The blood of Abel is not crying out any longer. Why? Because the true sons of God has emerged on the earth. There's no reason for the earth to groan any longer. And Romans chapter 8, verse 19, becomes a reality. Becomes a reality. Amen? Let me just close with this in 1 uh, John chapter 3 that we pray. 1 John chapter 3. You there? In verse 10. Understand, church, as God 
has his sons that will rise. Satan also has sons that will rise. Amen? You remember, you remember the wheat and the tear? Matthew chapter 13. And they said, let us pull the, pull the tear. And God said, no, 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 don't do that. Yes, you, lest you pull the wheat also. He said, let them grow. Because there will come a time where the wheat and the tear will be separated and will be distinctly identified. Am I right? Okay, now hear this. In 1 John, verse 3, verse 10. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. Have you seen that? By this the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. This is how you distinguish the ones that are with God and the ones that are not. Ones that are standing righteous, the one that is standing openly and allowing God to come and do his will and standing as the true son of God. Because understand, Noah was a righteous man in the eyes of God. He was blameless. He was, he was without spot. Am I right? And look at what God has done in his life. And people will get to know you. They will know what is of God and what is not. They will know that the sons of Satan and the sons of God. Amen, church. So I believe that as we come and as we rise as the manifestation of the true sons of God. I'm still going to continue this next week. This is just a foundation or just, just something that I read to you. Because understand, I brought this out to you to understand. It was man that brought a curse on the earth. It was man that brought corruption on the earth. That's why God had to say, I am so sorry that I made man. Do you think that we can fix it, church? Yes. Let us rise as the true sons of God. That the earth does not groan any longer. The earth comes into alignment. And when the earth comes into alignment, everything that Adam experienced in the days before the fall of man, we will experience that. Amen, church. Are you catching that, church? When you see... When you see the, 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 the animals, those animals that you, that you could not keep are now becoming pets. And you see a war roaming around and everything that's going around. You know, hey, something is happening. God is about to come back. Jesus is about to return. Amen. Are you catching that church? Because this is what the Bible that we just read now in Isaiah 11. We read that it will come back. When the sons of God are the one that's manifested on the earth, the earth comes back into alignment. And everything that we've experienced, everything that was experienced in the days of Genesis chapter 1, we will experience it again. Are you catching it, church? Amen? As much as, like I said to you, I think about two weeks ago, as much as we know that we, have, we don't know the time and the date, Jesus will come back like a thief. But there's certain things that is in the word of God that you know that is about to happen. And this one, where God has given us some clues He's given us clues. He says, you are in the last hour. Why? Because you see the Antichrist that is operating on the earth. We are waiting for the one Antichrist and God is saying, no. When you see the Antichrist upon the earth and the Antichrist is everywhere, church, in our governments, in our parliament, in our schools, in our education system, on the mountains, the different mountains, we see Antichrist popping up everywhere. Am I right? LGBTQ move, that's Antichrist. That's moving everywhere. And, and the Bible says, the book of John, where we read that, it says, when you see this, know that we're in the last hour. So sons, daughters, let's rise. Let's be the one to say, God, let the earth not groan any longer. Adam was the one that brought the corruption. Jesus was the one that came and prayed. The second Adam came and destroyed everything. Brought us back into everything that we could experience like before the fall. Are you catching a church? 
Hey, we've got to look at Jesus as a pattern son. How he walked the earth. What he did on the earth. The provisions that he had. Every single thing. He was, he, he was without sin, but he became sin for our sakes. And who says that we cannot live without sinning? If he did it, we can also. Am I right, church? He can also. So let's stand this morning. Let's just pray and let's just trust God and say, God, we don't want the earth to groan any longer, Lord. We don't want to. We want to be the sons that manifest. Church, I just read it. I think it was in the Isaiah 11. I spoke about the remnant of God. Am I right? Was it remnant that we spoke? <clears throat> I asked the guys, some of my pastor friends, this question. Because it's frustrating for me. Especially, and I know, like with Jesus, you know. But he fed the 5,000 and the disciples was there. And the 5,000 after they ate, they all disappeared. And he looked at his disciples and he said, do you want to go as well? And there were only 12 of them. But that 12 touched the entire earth. Am I right? And I had this battle and I, and I said, you know, especially in the oneness. Where Jesus says, Father, make them one as we are one. And I, I, said, I said to my, my pastor friend, I said, guys, this is, this is such a hard task. To bring the whole church into oneness. And I said, is it possible that if we have 10 people that will rise, 10 of us that are so one with God, that we are so one with each other, I said, will that happen? And I immediately thought about Abraham and Sodom and Gomorrah. When he started off with 50, he said, Lord, if I find 50 righteous, will you save this nation? And God said, yes. Came right down to 10. He could not find 10. But if he had found that 10 righteous people, would Sodom and Gomorrah be saved? Yes. And that was my answer. I said, Lord, if I have 10 people that are so one together, that are so one together with each other, I said, we will see mountains being moved. The church, we must not worry about the crowds. We as the children of God, when we rise as sons, we can see the earth change. Amen. So you're going to be the one, just us here in this room, we can be the ones that will rise and say, God, we do not want to see the earth grown any longer. Come on, raise your hands. You make the decision this morning and say, God, I do not want to see the earth grown any longer, Lord. I want to rise as a true son of the most high God. I want to rise as a true son of the most high God. Father, this morning, as your word has come, Father, thank you, my God. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for opening up the heaven. Thank you, my God, for bringing us and enlightening, enlightening us with your word this morning, God. Thank you, my Father. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for what you have released in the house, released over your children. Come on, raise your hands and say, Father, Lord, we want to be true sons of God. We want to be the true sons, Lord that we will manifest on the earth of God. Lord, we do not want to see the earth groaning any longer. We do not want to see the earth groaning, my God, for the manifestation of the true sons. Lord, we will be that true son. We will be that true daughter, my God. We will be after the pattern son, my God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray this morning, Lord, release that grace, Lord. Release that grace, my God, as I speak and as I release that over your children. Come on, raise your hands, church. We're going to pray in the spirit just for a few moments. You're going to release that. You're going to receive that grace this morning. That God will bring you into that true sonship this morning. God will bring you into that true son this morning. That the earth will not groan wherever you go. That earth will not groan. That earth will not groan. But you will see everything being attracted to you. Oh, come on. Receive that grace this morning. Lord, I pray. Let the heavens open right now. Release that grace upon your children, oh God. Release it, my God. Like in the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 33, oh God. I pray. Hey Lord, release that grace upon your children. Release that abundant grace, my God. That great grace, my God. Release it upon your children. Come on, let's pray in the Holy Spirit for a moment. Libra shanda la basito robo. Rema shendele bebe. Sita rababa. Libra bo shendele bebe. Sita rababa. Kira babo shanda la basito robo. Lebra ma shendele bebe. Sita rabaka. Lebra shendele bebe. Sito robo. Rima ma shanda laba. Sita rababa. Ka. Lebra bo 
Release that, my God. Come on, church, receive that this morning. Receive that grace this morning. Receive it this morning. Oh God, I pray, pour it out. Pour it out, my God. Pour it out, Lord. Pour out great grace upon your children, oh God. Let them rise as sons. Let them rise as true daughters and sons of the Most High God. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father, that the earth will not groan, my God, for the manifestation of the sons. Lord, where your children go, my God, something supernatural will happen at their workplace, my God, at their jobs, my God. Oh God, at their businesses, Lord. Oh God, in schools, my God, in the universities, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that supernatural things will be drawn to them, Father. Oh God, I thank you, Lord, that you will draw things to them, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you, Lord. We will bring the earth back to its alignment, Lord. We will bring the earth back to alignment, my God, like in one Genesis 1 26, my God. We bring the earth back into alignment, my God, Lord, that the earth will not groan any longer longer father for the manifestation of the sons of the living God come on give the Lord a mighty shout of praise hallelujah we bless you father we thank you my God oh these are your sons Lord these are your daughters my God Lord that will not let the earth groan any longer father in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah